The next guest is well known to you and well known to me, Alistair Boyce, Boyce from the back bench, who is Pen Day Column. Pen Day Column calling on businesses fundamentally, and I'm paraphrasing here, to grow up here because the government is basically getting in their grills too much. What is Boyce on about to find out? We've got him on the show. He joins us now. Boyce, good morning to you, mate. How are you? G'day, Sean. Good to be with you. Yeah, you're doing better than me, mate, to be honest. Have you had the road? Rona yet or not? Sorry, the what? Have you had the Rona? The coronavirus. Uh, I'm not sure. I may have had it, but I, I've had odd symptoms, but I haven't uh, had a positive test. Have you got it? Oh, okay. Well, I have. I've tested. I'm talking to you from my dining room table. Yeah, you sound a bit nasal. Yes, that. that I think that that's a very nice way of putting it. <laughs> That's a very nice way of putting it. So your column is basically saying, come on, businesses, get the government out of your business. What prompted you to write this? What got you going, Boise? Well, we, we had a, a small business um, meeting that um, we promulgated out um, in conjunction uh, with the Restaurant Association, but also through um, my good friend Al Langs. Uh, he, he runs Capital Produce through a 600 database in the CBD of Wellington to come and have a meeting with us and discuss a whole lot of issues. We did a survey um, and a whole lot of issues came out um, and I was um, very conscious that there was no, uh, there was not enough voice for small business coming through this. So we probably had an attendance of about 30% hospo and about 70% small business. Um, and the concerns were deep uh, and varied, but the essence of it was there wasn't a voice uh, effective enough to lobby on their behalf uh, with the depth of concern that was emanating out of the CBD, especially of Wellington. You're um, talking about so, Wellington specifically rather than nationwide? No, I've, I've got networks into the rural sector and the wire wrapper and Taupo and Tauranga, and I've got networks into Hospo, especially in Auckland, uh, through the wider mm -hmm. uh, businesses. I, I supply coffee, as you know, as well, and yeah. also I have a connection through to what was Nourish Group. Uh, I think it's still Nourish Group, uh, and they own yeah. um, a lot of restaurants and bars up and down the country. Um, and then I've got the networks right through to the rural sector. So this stems not just the CBD of Wellington, but that was our primary concern when we started the, the communication into um, to try and pull together and get uh, an effective lobby group uh, and then start on behalf, you know, communicate effectively within that lobby group and then speak on their behalf uh, more vociferously than what most of the CEOs and industry leaders seem to be able to do. Yeah, but you've, got, to... Look, you've got the Wellington Chamber of Commerce, you've got Business New Zealand, you've got the Employers and Manufacturers Association, you've got the Restaurant Association, you've got Federated Farmers. I mean, I could go on all day for all the lobby groups that are there. I, I would might yeah. personally say, Boise, the last thing we need is another bloody lobby group. Well, we're we're not quite, we're not going to charge anyone to be in it for a start. Secondly, we're not part of the system. Uh, what really bothers me is that um, the lobby groups seem to coalesce with government, um, and they they then become part of the machine, part of the system. Whereas, mm. um, what the representation that the feedback we're getting and I'm getting is that they want someone who's uh, pre prepared to vociferously stand up against what's happening and say, no, <laughs> we've had enough. Yeah. Um, we want our business economic freedoms back. We believe in free market liberal democracy. We believe in uh, the wealth generation through the free market. Uh, government is overreached. It's uh, ballooned. It's uh, strangling us, it's spe especially strangling small business. And small business includes farms and the rural sector. Uh, the, the level of compliance um, through the small business. Small business is what I'm really, really concerned about because we're just getting yeah. strangled and we're running out of credit. I was with a farmer on the weekend in Taupo and he just, despite having three businesses uh, and the 
you know, a farm with good equity and a brewing company with good equity, um, he, he cannot find enough equity to keep going. You know, he can't get the um, the working capitals running out on everyone. So um, we've we've got another year at least to get through with this government, but we need action now. And sometimes you've got to say no. This is ridiculous. This fair pay agreement coming and this income insurance is. Just bad policy. It, it, it is unworkable. Yeah, those are two policies anyway. that are going to, yeah, they're going to hit all businesses, the small in particular. It's interesting you raise this, Boise, because I was talking to um, Federated Farmers earlier this morning and the difference in response to this emissions uh, plan for the agricultural sector, you look at beef and lamb New Zealand and you look at dairy New Zealand and they have fallen in and almost become part of the government's plan. They've completely bowled over and you know, dropped their trousers and, and bent over on this. Federated Farmers yeah, well, that, says, well... that's the sort of thing they, I'm talking they, about. They are more like the government. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's absolutely... And farmers the we need to speak, speak more radically, yeah. Yeah, it's the antithesis of what a CEO's role and an industry leader's role is. You know, they've got to protect... Uh, their their members, um, uh, free market, even playing field, um, ability to to operate. I mean, we're, it is almost impossible to make money in small business unless you're in some pocket where a privileged pocket. Um, so yeah. Yeah, we're under real threat in small business in New Zealand. Okay, and that threat. Well, I'm a great believer. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a great believer, and the platform is an example of this. If you're gonna um, be negative about your industry and say something needs to change, you should probably get off your chuff and change it yourself. Have you got plans to launch this new lobby representative group for small business, Boise? No, it'll just stay informal and it'll stay informal until <laughs> we get a change of government. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Of course, the reason for it will go, you're more likely to have a government that doesn't do things to small business that they don't like. So what I'm saying is it's all very well. you saying, oh, we need this and we need that. But unless someone's going to do it, it's just hot air, ain't it? Well, uh, well, it can stretch into political parties. Uh, and obviously that would be on the centre right uh, to get effective policy yeah. through. Uh, so David Seymour is basically on track. Like He is a real protector and he, he's an outspoken advocate uh, for small business and freedom, economic freedom and uh, so yep. now we need to get national on track, and they're, they're not committing yet. They need they need to sort of front up and uh, take this on at a deeper level. So hopefully we can uh, get some really strong. They were slow in. too on the emissions scheme. They were slow on coming out with a definitive statement on the emissions. Um, they were, for and then they, they they also backed the public holiday, which cost five hundred and fifty thousand sm businesses. Small ones get affected more than large ones. Um, yeah. Five hundred million dollars, like, and they backed it. They acquiesced to the power structure of the government, and they um, didn't go hard enough. Uh, and that really, really turned a lot of the networks I know. Um, and yeah. It really, David Seymour got a lot of mileage, and rightfully so, because he, he <laughs> will stand up and be counted, you know? Mm. Yeah. So we need, we need um, I have to get. ask you too, Boise. Yeah. yeah. Carry on. Oh, no, no, I'm with you. Um, yeah, all right. Um, look, the other interesting thing that I thought of, while we talk about what is happening to farmers with, you know, emissions pricing... Uh, we have a paper that says 20 to 25 percent of their industry could go under as a result of this policy, and that is said without any kind of s seeming regret or compunction. Um, it's just stated as a fact, a cold hard fact. But the fact is, too, isn't it? If we put the squeeze through, I would say, questionably beneficial um, emissions charges on the agricultural sector. At the end of the day, food is going to cost people more. And to be honest, in an outfit like yours, what you put on a table at lunchtime for someone who's coming into the backbencher, the price of that is going to go up. It is going to feed through to all sorts of businesses and it is going to put increased cost and maybe reduce turnover and reduce profit on all sectors of the economy. 
Yep, that's the economic reality. I agree with you 100%. We produce food in this country far more efficiently than the rest of the world, and now we're having our production cut. Uh, we're better off producing food with less emissions than uh, opposing uh, economies around the world. We should be maximising that and leading the way um, with our efficiency. Uh, food should be exempt or have uh, a higher level of exemption uh, in regard to any any response to climate change. And this is the other thing that I'm really on about, is this overriding uh, climate change emergency ideology. And we've got to do this no matter what and at all costs. And it doesn't seem to be thought out. Because if you go ahead uh, to the end of this sort of uh, argument, you alienate so many parts of society. You divide so many parts of society. And this is on the back of co-governance as well. So they keep shaving off parts of our socio-economy. They keep um, sh uh, dividing by virtue of uh, race, but it could be anything. It could be elitism. It could be anything. So in the end, you've just got this fractured society that economically um, just becomes less and less efficient. Uh, and more, the, the state yep. sector becomes bigger and bigger, pushing out the private sector. So the private sector's got to stand up for itself. And business leaders really need to stand up for who they truly are. And CEOs need to be um, standing up for free market uh, uh, democratic liberalism, you know, like, and then pulling, you've got yeah. to have your um, your democracy pulled together. You can't have, like, well, you could have 50% alienated from the, the decision-making process who totally oppose, you know. We'll get a, a, a yeah, well, ghetto we've got in that, our... Well, well we, ha we have a huge... Uh, problem in terms of participation at local body. Mind you, that doesn't yeah. seem to feed through, thankfully, Boise in, uh, in national debate. Are you going to run for politics or something next time? Because you're sounding very, very, very political for a public and <laughs> the guy who runs a pub. I'm not sure as yet uh, uh, to do that. I mean, Oh, I uh, so I that's mean. not a no. That is not, no, a, not no, a no, Boise. No, it's not a no, but you do have to go through pre-selection... Uh, uh, things and uh, you have who to would you run for? Who would you run for? Who would well, you run for? Come on. Well, it'd have to be a centre right, right party. party. So, so act on yeah, I'm still, I'm still on the mainstream. I still believe in pulling the whole thing back together and uh, um, getting society okay. running on. All right, Boise. Well, you'll basis. let us know. You'll let us I know, will. won't you, if you decide that you're going to turn into one of them. That is Alistair Boyce. He's the publican at the back bencher. Uh, across the road from Parliament, which is full of puppets and politicians and the site of many a good argument um, and the odd Donnybrook. Um, he just says business is getting well done, done over, done like a dog's dinner. And I think it's an interesting observation he makes. Most farms or farms used to be small businesses, small family businesses, and they're getting hit just as hard as any other small business. And, of course, we've got this... Well, return essentially to national awards with the so-called misnamed fair pay agreements um, bill and these changes to ACC, this compulsory job insurance. Amazing stuff, really.